You know, one thing I can't stand much is fan noise, which is why I'm okay with a mini that has a potato CPU in it, as long as it's quiet. And that's one reason I enjoy covering so many budget mini PCs, if you were wondering. Anyway, when B-Link sent me the product information for the Sur 8 mini PC, I noticed a bit about the reduced fan noise, and I was pretty skeptical. A trait more people would do well to adopt with everything in life, really. I've heard it all before. It's near silent, uses some fancy new fan or heatsink combo, the usual marketing spiel. And then I plugged in the mini PC, put it under a full core load, and for real this time. Of course, the dreaded fan noise is only one part of the mini PC equation, even if it's a big part of mine. So let's see what else the B-Link Sur 8 gets right, or wrong for that matter, right after this message. The EaseUS disk copy software makes upgrading your storage drives faster and easier. Clone drives or migrate Windows installations to new ones with a simple and easy to use interface. This app supports disk, system, and even partition cloning. Find out more with the link in the video description. B-Link's taken the best parts of their previous mini PC releases and mashed them together to create the Sur 8. It's also a bigger mini PC than the 7. How big is it? Well, here you can see the difference between a mini that sticks close to Intel's original 4x4 inch NUC design and the Sur 8, which is quite a bit larger. I'm absolutely fine with it if it means better cooling and lower fan noise. In fact, it's something I've been saying for a few years now. Just do it. Make it bigger. Shut it up. Anyway, all air intake for this one comes from the bottom plastic lid and is expelled out the rear end. Sorry, couldn't squeeze one out. The sides on this Mini are all covered up. Overall, I think the Sur 8 looks nice and it feels well put together in the hands. Inside is AMD's current Ryzen 8845HS, one of their top end CPUs. An eight core processor with a Radeon 7080M. The fastest integrated graphics available and also comes with some of that AI if you plan to, I don't know, stable diffusion or something. Ask Jensen, he has big plans for the AI revolution. It'll help wipe your ass or something. I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. I fell asleep during the keynote. Well, at least I got an Nvidia shirt for wasting two hours of my time. So, uh, all's forgiven. Where were we? Oh right, so the lowest priced B-Link Sur 8 model at the moment is 649 US dollars on Amazon after the coupon. That's for the 32 gigabyte memory, one terabyte storage combo, and falls in line with other top-end AMD Minis with similar specs. There's not a whole lot included in the box, the Sur 8 doesn't support VESA mounting, and the power supply is bigger than other Minis using the much more compact FSP power supply, which is the way to go. Anyway, the front has a clear CMOS button, 3.5mm audio jack, and both USB ports are 10 gigabit data only. There's another audio jack on the back, and another three USB Type-A ports one being 10 gigabit and the other USB 2. There's also USB 4 40 gigabit, which does support power and display. My USB-C monitor had the mini PC running just fine. There's also DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.1, supporting up to 4K 120Hz. The DisplayPort goes up to 144Hz at 4K. So, up to three monitors natively on this one. Networking is handled by a Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN jack, and inside is an Intel AX200 Wi-Fi 6 Bluetooth chip. That's definitely not the latest wireless chip around. And speaking of wireless, the range on the Sur 8 is definitely a weak point. I had constant dropouts at 10 meters or 32 feet using the 5G band. It was unusable. I had to switch to 2.4G to be able to browse the internet, and even then, it wasn't fast. There was very low ping in games, and even dropped me out of the game entirely at this distance. You're gonna have to get much closer. Use wired internet, or an external USB Wi-Fi adapter, or something. I also tried Bluetooth, and no surprise, I had the worst result at just 2 meters for the audio speaker to not cut out randomly. That's just 6.5 feet, and a pretty poor result. To open the Sur 8, you need to remove the rubber covering the four screws, which is an annoyance. Once the four screws are out, there's a piece of rubber you can pull to pop open the lid. B-Link's added a dust filter with this one, and there are another four screws to remove. 
The SSD is now cooled with a heatsink instead of a fan, and there's space for an additional Gen 4 2280 NVMe drive. Crucial branded parts are used for the DDR5 5600 memory and Gen 4 NVMe in this unit. B-Link's now using the bottom air intake to cool everything, so that'll be interesting to put to the test. The SIR 8 doesn't come in a barebones config, and the pre-build comes with Windows 11 Pro. As always, I scanned it, and this Windows image came up clean. Ubuntu also worked fine off a USB drive. Alright, so AMD's 8845HS is a new CPU entering the charts. Let's see how it holds up in B-Link's SIR 8. Single core Cinebench isn't too interesting. It basically performs like the 7840HS. B-Link includes a balanced and performance mode you can select in the BIOS. Balanced maxes out the CPU at 54 watts, while performance goes up to 65. More power means more heat and fan noise, but we'll go over that later. The SIR 8 in Cinebench Multicore performs near the top of the stack using balance mode and pretty much ties the top performer using performance. Nice! Geekbench saw things a bit differently, giving the Geekom A8 the win in Multicore. With the H.264 CPU encoding, the SIR 8 is back on top. AV1 wasn't a huge improvement with performance mode, only shaving off 10 seconds which is under a couple of percent. The Gen 4 NVMe drive included with the SIR 8 is definitely not the fastest I've tested, but has decent sequential read and write speeds. While the top minis have AMD's Radeon 780M graphics, it's nice to see the SIR 8 performing well in the benchmarks, taking the top spot in DX11 and second place in DX12. Overall, b Mini performs very well across the board, but if you've got an eGPU handy, you can plug that into the USB 4 port and get much better performance. Here I'm playing at 4K using my Razer Core X and an RTX 3070. For gaming, where the SIR 8 shines is as a quiet esports gaming box, or even 1080p low detail for the AAA games. Although that's starting to get more difficult as the performance requirements keep going up. For my tests, I'm using performance mode, Although, you're not going to need the extra multi-core CPU performance in pretty much any game. The integrated graphics will be the bottleneck almost every time. But I know most want to see the performance maxed out, so here we go. I tried the usual eSports suite of games to see if anything was out of the ordinary, and everything's fine with numbers as expected. No cooling problems. AMD's Radeon 780M may be the most powerful integrated graphics available, but that doesn't mean it won't struggle with the latest titles. It all depends on what you can accept frame rate and detail wise. Most games you'll be using low detail at 1080p and an upscaler like AMD's FSR 2 or 3 to get decent frame rates. Here are a few recent examples, such as Ghost of Tsushima with no upscaling at all, and then next to it is FSR 3 balance mode, and next to that, with frame generation. Makes a big difference. I'm not going into the drawbacks of upscaling and frame generation here. If you're interested in that, there are plenty of videos on the topic. Here's Robocop using the same settings. And remember that FSR 3 is not available with every game. Hellblade 2 claims to have FSR 3, but with no frame generation option, I'd say it's just FSR 2.2. Anyway, this game only starts becoming a bit more playable once you add FSR upscaling on top. Emulation performance hasn't improved, you're looking at the same results as the top 7000 series CPUs. Race complete. 
AMD's 8845HS is fine for 4K video editing. I'd still go with an Intel option if video editing is the primary use, as their CPUs have definitely been optimized for something like Adobe Premiere. But if you're also gaming or doing other tasks, then an AMD CPU is still a good option. B-Link has made all the common BIOS features easily accessible in the Advanced tab, and then OEM Features Management. Those wanting to go into more granular detail have the AMD CBS options in Advanced tab, allowing you to limit power draw further, add more dedicated VRAM, and so on. The idle power draw of the Sur8 is high. At 14 watts, it takes the top spot. I waited and checked multiple times, but it never dropped below the 14 mark. Maximum power draw depends on the mode you set in the BIOS. I recommend leaving it at balanced if you're powering it using 100 watts USB-C. Max CPU temp held up very well for both modes. I saw Beelink claim in their marketing that the Mini manages to stay under 80C using the 65 watt power mode. They weren't lying. My tests showed exactly the same. As mentioned earlier in the review, the Sur8 is amazingly quiet for the CPU it's packing at its default balance mode. At 33 dBA under a full core CPU load, it's quieter than a bunch of budget mini PCs running potatoes. Performance mode ups the noise by 5 dBA, and I don't think that trade-off is worth it for the small CPU performance increase. This is finally a high-end mini that is quiet enough for me, and I'd stick to balance mode at all times. B-Link was one of the first, if not the first, to include active NVMe cooling. So I'm glad that the drive inside the Sur8 stayed cool during my tests now that the fan has been removed in favour of a heatsink and airflow. Okay, this was a fun mini to review, so let's wrap it up. B-Link's Sur8 mini PC has a nice metal case design and finish. Performance is top notch and it doesn't miss a beat. Noise levels are the lowest I've ever recorded for this high end. A complete game changer. Cooling is also excellent and sets a new bar for mini PCs with this power draw. The proprietary magnetic power plug from the Sur7 has been dumped for the standard barrel jack, which is also great. But wireless range is bad. Actually, it might be the worst I've come across. It's not just the middle case, as even putting it on its side so the plastic bottom is facing the router still didn't solve Wi-Fi ping issues while gaming at 10 meters. No VESA mount is included for those wanting to mount it on a monitor or elsewhere. The 8000 series are really lame CPUs released by AMD to cash in on the AI craze. This isn't any fault of B-Links, but there's little to no improvement over the 7000 series performance wise. B-Link could also provide a much smaller power supply, bringing it in line with other brands. So, basically, B-Link has got the performance right and noise down to impressive levels. Now there are just a few things left to improve upon. Obviously the wireless range is the most important issue remaining, and it'll really stand out from the rest as the top mini PC choice. Still, the B-Link Sur8 is an impressive mini PC, and if you want something with low noise, it's unbeaten so far. But if you're looking for something cheaper, with similar performance, check out my B-Link Sur7 review, which you can find right here. Cheers!